you're looking for some new ways to cook ground beef, then I have four easy, delicious recipes that you can make. And they're new to us, and we enjoyed them, so I hope that you will as well. So let's get started making these recipes. This first recipe is a ground beef burrito skillet meal. And this one is really delicious. Very simple and easy to make. So for this one, you will need one and a half pounds of ground beef, one cup of shredded cheddar jack cheese. It calls for 19 ounces of red enchilada sauce. These are 10 ounces each, so one ounce is not gonna hurt it. So 20 ounces. And then you need one can of black beans, 15 ounce can, and a 15 ounce can of pinto beans. And you wanna drain and rinse both of those. You will need some beef broth, one cup of instant rice, three tablespoons of taco seasoning, and it's about a half a cup of chopped onions, and I believe it's six uh, tortillas, and I like the carb balance one, and we're gonna cut those into one inch strips to put into this skillet meal. So I'm gonna cook my ground beef and the onions together. You can, if you want, cook the onions first and then put the ground meat in, but I prefer to do this way. And I'm gonna also add some garlic, minced garlic to this. And I will also add some garlic powder to this along with onion powder as well. I like to season my meat. If you've been here for a while, you know that I like to do that. And it does add extra flavor and it doesn't taste bland. So I'm gonna cook this until that ground beef is completely cooked and it's no longer pink. And I'm gonna add those onions and the garlic into that as well. I'm gonna drain off any extra grease that's there. I'm adding the half a cup of water and then I'm gonna add the taco seasoning, similar to when you make you know, tacos, ground beef tacos. Then I'm gonna fully uh, mix that in and you want to make sure that gets incorporated. Then I'm going to add a half a cup of beef broth. I'm adding the rice, that instant rice, and the enchilada sauce. Now, I do add that whole can. I end up adding the whole can of the beef broth because it needed it with the rice. As I cooked it, um, it wasn't cooking through, so I did add all of it. So just judge it as you go. And I did add the beans in. I drained and rinsed those. And then I just wanna mix that up well. Now you wanna bring it to a boil and then cover it. And you wanna cook it until the rice is tender. As I said, that instant rice does not cook the same in this as it does like in the microwave, in the, in the water. But then I took those burrito, um, tortilla, tortillas, and just cut those into one inch strips and then I start adding them to the mixture once it's cooked. And I did not add all of them. I saved some because um, I wasn't sure if it was gonna be too much in this. And if we wanted any, we could, you know, mix it in when, um, or on top of it when we went to eat it if we had leftovers. So you can add all of it. I think it would be okay. Uh, I just chose not to. I just felt like it was getting to be a lot in there. So that's about what I had left. But that's up to you. You have to judge it on your own to see what you could, you know, how you would want it. But I think all of it could have been okay. Then I'm adding the cheese. I did not measure it out. It says one cup, but I'm just going to put it over the top. How much I like. We like cheese. And then I'm going to cover it and just let that cheese melt. You can either leave it on a low temperature or turn it off and just let it melt. And this is what it looks like when it's done. And as I said, you may have to cook the rice a little bit longer. So next time I may put it in the microwave and do that, cook it halfway through and then put it into the pan. But I just had some sour cream on top with some tomatoes that I chopped up. And this was really delicious. So it's a very good meal really did enjoy it. Uh, we all enjoyed it and had some corn on the side. Very filling meal. A great one to try. This next one is a beef and spinach pasta bake. 
This was another one we tried this week and we did enjoy this one as well. So you do need some spinach. It did not specify how much, but this is a five ounce container and I'm gonna use fresh spinach for this, but you can use frozen if you'd like. Also onion powder, garlic powder, and some pepper for some seasoning. I'm going to also add three tablespoons of minced garlic to this. You will need two tablespoons of cornstarch, two teaspoons of Worcestershire sauce or balsamic vinegar. Either one will work. You're going to need a medium onion chopped. I probably had a large one and that's what I'm using because we like onions. I'm also going to add some mushrooms into this as well. I had a jar of uh, mushrooms so I'm going to add that in. She also added this into hers for texture. You can use two cups of cooked pasta whatever your favorite pasta is you can use i found these in the store i've used them before and decided to use them again for this and you will also make a cheese sauce for this so you will need um, just whatever your favorite grated cheese is you need one and a half cups of that and then you're going to need one and a fourth cups of chicken broth and one and a fourth cups of milk a third cup of all-purpose flour and of course you do need a pound of ground beef for this and also three tablespoons of butter so I'm going to season my ground beef with the garlic powder onion powder you can really season this with whatever you like some pepper and a lot of times I would add Cajun seasoning but my grandson's gonna be eating it so I just chose not to do that this time also some onions and three tablespoons or three teaspoons of or three cloves of garlic minced i'm adding those mushrooms in you do not have to add the mushrooms that's optional so i'm going to add that in i just feel like this helps kind of give it a little bit more texture to it just like she said in the recipe once the meat's cooked and I drain off the grease, I add the Worcestershire sauce, then I'm adding the cornstarch, and I'm gonna mix that cornstarch in until you don't see that anymore. And all of that is mixed in. Then I add the spinach, and I add a little bit at a time because you know it does pile up when you use fresh spinach, but it cooks down very, very quickly into nothing so just if you're using fresh spinach gradually add it until it's completely cooked in and cooked down as you can see that's about five ounces there now to make the cheese sauce you will melt the three tablespoons of butter and just make sure to constantly stir this you don't want it to burn add your flour you're sort of making a roux a little bit so we're going to mix this up until it becomes more of a paste kind of texture to it and we're not really trying to get it to a certain color or anything we just want to mix it up so you can kind of see where it's kind of getting more th it's thicker so it's more of a pasty type texture so once you get to that then add the milk and the chicken broth i added the chicken broth into the milk so that way it would just be easier instead of trying to add you know two at one time so you can see it kind of getting thick I add a little bit at a time and you will just continue to do that don't add it all at once add a little bit whisk it a little bit and then you will eventually get to a thicker you know consistency and then that part of it will be done and then you're going to add the cheese into this and now I add in the cheese once I get that milk and everything, you know, to a thicker consistency. Sorry that it, the steam's <laughs> kind of doing that to the image. But then you will take a 8x8 or so casserole dish, spray it down with some nonstick spray. I put the meat down first, and you're going to layer this in layers. So the meat, the cooked noodles, the cooked pasta, then some of the cheese sauce and you should have enough to maybe do three layers i believe it said and i think that's about what i had i think for this one so i'm just kind of i want to make sure that those noodles get some of that sauce on it you don't want it to be dry so just make sure you know you get that spread on evenly then add the meat again over the top of that and just 
you know, spread it out as evenly as you can. Put some more of the cooked noodles on top. Add some more of the cheese sauce and continue to do that. And I did add a little more seasoning to this um, as well. And now I'm adding the rest of the meat sauce, I mean the meat mixture on top, the rest of the noodles, the pasta, and the rest of that cheese sauce. I did have a little extra, I made extra of the noodles because I wanted to make sure, I didn't know if two cups cooked was going to be enough. So I probably had about three cups, I want to say, of cooked pasta. So just make maybe make a little extra if you have extra and you don't use it you could probably use it and make a little macaroni and cheese or something but then I add the cheese on top and I did add extra <laughs> than what it said I put this on a cookie sheet with just some foil down in case it bubbled over put it in the oven on 350 and just cooked it until you know you could see that brownness on top and it was cooked fully through I think it might have said 20 minutes I'll leave the recipe down below for you to get the exact time and everything. But this is what it looks like when it's done. This was delicious. And as I said, I did add a little extra seasoning uh, to it. Uh, you can add some Tony Sacheries if you want, some salt and pepper. And usually just salt and pepper was kind of, you know, what it, what it needed a little extra of. So this one was good. Like I said, you may have to adjust it for your taste as far as what type of seasoning you like in this. But we enjoyed it and it was a great one to have. So the next one is a one skillet lasagna. This was really delicious. Now this one is made in a skillet. So we're making lasagna on the stove and very easy to make. You will need some of the lasagna noodles. That's the no boil kind, no cook kind. That's the one you want for this. It called for two 14 ounce jars of your favorite pasta sauce. This is about a 22 or 24 ounce, I can't remember, on there. And I'm only using one jar and that was really all it needed for this. But if you have a 14 ounce jar, you wanna use two. It called for a can of petite diced tomatoes with the seasoning in it, which had the basil and the oregano in it. I did not have that, so I'm using what I had on hand, which was the petite diced tomatoes, and I just added some seasoning to it that would have been in it. <laughs> so that's how I'm going to do that one, but you can buy the one that already has it. You need two-third cup of cream of onion soup, so not the whole can, just two-thirds cup of it, and you also need some Italian seasoning, two eggs lightly beaten. You will need one and a fourth cups of cottage cheese and ground beef of course it called for three-fourths pound of ground beef I'm using a pound um, I don't know why it's three-fourths of a pound but a pound worked out great for this so you need a half a cup of mozzarella cheese shredded and a half a cup of Colby and Monterey Jack cheese shredded and now I'm going to show you how to put this one together super easy so ground you want to brown the ground beef put your garlic with the meat you can always if you want to you know do it separately but I like to just add everything in and then I'm gonna season my ground beef in a little bit I don't season it right here but I will drain off all of that grease that it's being cooked in now I'm gonna add the tomatoes and if you have the tomatoes at X4 then that's all you would add but I'm adding the seasoning in so that way it gives it you know more flavor since I didn't have the one that was already seasoned now I'm adding the garlic powder now I'm gonna add the marinara sauce if like I said this is a large jar if you have the 14 ounces then you would probably add both of those I think that would work well but with one this was fine and as I said, this was like a 22 ounce, I believe. 
So I mix that in. Then add to a bowl that onion soup mix, the cottage cheese, the eggs, and just mix it up really well. So you take a cut, first take all of that sauce out of the pan, put it into a bowl. Now I put probably about a cup or so on the bottom. So that's the first layer. And then I'm going to add to this that onion soup mix with the cottage cheese. I know it sounds like an odd combination, but it actually was very good. This worked out really well. Um, so you put a little bit of that on the bottom, try to make a layer with it, just spread it out. And I just, you know, like I said, I put as much as I thought, you know, would go on the bottom and kind of mix it in. Just spread it out the best that you can. And I just want to make sure that that gets on there just to give it, you know, more flavor. Now you will take your lasagna noodles and you're just gonna divide these into layers. So I think I used four on the bottom and you will probably have to crack and break them up uh, to fit them into the pan, um, depending on the size of your pan. So I think that's three and then I think I used another one um, to get it to fit. So I total, you should have nine noodles, but you can use really as much as you want, just, you know, to cover it up. Now, the next layer, you're supposed to put down the onion soup mix on top of the noodles, but I ended up um, doing it in reverse. So I ended up doing the meat sauce, but it said to put the onion soup mix, which may have been a little bit easier to, you know, spread out and then put the meat sauce on top of that. But it worked out fine and it tasted fine. So all I did was just spread that out over the noodles. And then take the onion soup and cottage cheese mixture and spread that over the top and just get it as evenly as you can over the meat mixture. And now put the rest of the noodles on top. And as I added those ingredients, um, instead of it being narrow on the bottom, it's kind of getting, you know, a little fuller on the top. So it's more rounder, if that makes sense, if you can see what I'm talking about, um, that you don't have to break as many, two of those at least fit now. So it depends on your pan, you know, how much you're gonna have to break these up. But that really doesn't matter because it all cooks evenly, it all cooks together. Then add the rest of the meat sauce on top. Make sure you cover all of the noodles so that doesn't get dried out. Then I covered it and cooked it for about 15 to 17 minutes till the noodles were tender. And then I'm gonna add the mozzarella on top. And I'm just eyeballing it. I'm not really measuring it, but it was a half a cup for that and half a cup for the Monterey Jack cheese as well. And once you get the amount that you want on there, then you will cover this again and let that cheese melt. You can, um, usually the heat from the rest of it will let it melt, but you can turn it on for a second if you want. But this is, yeah, what, this it is what it looks like when it's done. It was delicious. This is definitely one I would make again. And I really did enjoy this one. I would add some hot sausage to it the next time I make it but very easy and doesn't take you know you don't have to turn your oven on for this one you could just make it on the stove and had some green beans with it on the side you can also have some um, garlic bread with this as well so definitely a crowd pleaser for this one really enjoyed it this next one is a meat and potato casserole so very easy to make as well and this one has a lot of flavor uh, my family enjoyed this one and I will show you the ingredients that you need for the recipe and then I'm going to show you some of the things that I added to it uh, that I felt made it a little bit uh, more flavorful 
So for the things that you need for this recipe, it was a pound of ground beef, a can of cream of celery soup, a 10 ounce bag of frozen corn. I had a 12 ounce bag and this worked out fine. You will need a fourth teaspoon of garlic powder and a fourth teaspoon of black pepper. It also called for a cup of shredded uh, cheddar cheese, divided. So right now that's just a half a cup I have right there and I have the other half on the side. You need a half a cup of milk, some salt, two tablespoons I believe of butter, four cups of thinly sliced potatoes and I did those with my mandolin so very carefully <laughs> but that's the easiest way I think to do that. So if you have one of those to use to slice them, I would use it for this or just slice them thinly. And then the things that I'm adding to it are these um, onions. And I think I might have had a half an onion or so or a medium onion that I chopped up. Then I also have my seasoning, which is the garlic powder. And I'm also going to add this um, Kinder's Buttery Steakhouse seasoning and some garlic, minced garlic to it as well. So these are things that the recipe did not call for, but I'm going to add because I just feel like it adds flavor. I'm also gonna stretch this with some hot sausage I had in the freezer. This is already cooked. So I decided just to go ahead and add this to it and hopefully that will work out, which it did. But at the time I was thinking hopefully it would work out because I did not know. So that's a pound of hot sausage. That added a lot of flavor to this meal. And like I said, just simple ingredients, but you do need those potatoes cut thinly. So make sure you get those done. And I used two tablespoons of the melted butter, put that into the potatoes, and this is gonna help it stick to the pan and to you know, have the, the seasoning kind of stick to your potatoes. So I'm adding some garlic powder to that. I will add some salt. We do watch our salt intake, but I'm just gonna add some of that to it. And this Kinder's Buttery Steakhouse seasoning, it's really one of my favorites for potatoes, for anything really, but for the potatoes, it really does add a lot of flavor. So I'm just gonna toss those around a little bit just to get it coated. Spray a nine by 13 inch baking dish with some nonstick spray. And then I'm gonna start putting the potatoes around the sides of the pan. But I also add some in the middle on the bottom. So that way it'll start holding up some of the potatoes, you know, along the side. And just do the best you can. It doesn't have to be perfect. Even, you know, if you want, you can just put them on the bottom. But I'm just trying to you know, do as the recipe said and try to get them, you know, along the sides of the pan. So you're trying to make sort of a potato crust, I guess, with it. And I just thought it was a unique way to do this. So that's why I'm trying it out. And once I get all of that kind of on the sides and everything, uh, I just kind of fill in a little bit where I think they need, you know, just a little bit more of the potatoes. Then I baked this in the oven for on 400 for about 25 to 30 minutes until the potatoes kind of come out a little tender. You sort of want them cooked um, before we add, you know, the mixture on top. I did add more seasoning. This is before putting it in the oven. I added a little bit more of that Kinder's uh, Buttery Steakhouse seasoning as well. Now, while that's in the oven, I'm adding my ground beef, garlic, and onions to a pan. And then I'm going to season my meat up with the garlic powder. I'm going to cook that down and then drain off the grease. But I'm going to wait to put this hot sausage in since it's already cooked. So first, I cook all of that down. And as I said, drain off the grease. Add in this hot sausage that's already cooked to it and this step you do not have to do but I just felt like it helped bulk up the recipe a little bit more as well but added extra seasoning to it so I really and you know we did enjoy this part of it with it being in there so I'm just mixing it in trying to heat the 
sausage in as well with the ground beef. I'm adding the frozen corn. And then you just want to mix that in really well and, uh, you know, get it heated through. And now I'm going to take a bowl and just add the cream of celery to that. Add the milk. And then I'm going to add the seasoning to it. Add half a cup of the cheddar cheese. And then just mix this up really, really well. You want to, you know, thoroughly incorporate those ingredients. And then I'm going to add, I decided, this is not in the recipe, I decided to add some sour cream to it. Since I'm adding extra meat to this, I decided this needs to be a little bit more creamier and I want it to stretch it a little bit. And I didn't want to add any more soup to it, so I'm just adding extra sour cream. And I will add just a little bit more milk to this as well. Just so that way, because I can see it's going to be thick, and I just want to make sure it's going to be more of a creamy texture, I guess you can say, for this. So I'm kind of doing my own thing here. And as I said, I added a little bit extra milk. I'm just kind of eyeballing how much I want to put in. So you can do this as well uh, if you're going to add extra meat to it. But if not, just follow the directions as is. And once I get that mixed in, this is what the potatoes look like when they came out of the oven. It kind of fell over just a little bit on the sides, but it worked out pretty good. Now I added that meat mixture on top of the potatoes, and now I'm adding the soup mixture over the meat. And I'm just going to spread this out as evenly as I can get it. And like I said, I wanted to make sure I had enough, and that's why I added the sour cream and the milk to it to kind of stretch it a little bit. But that's why I just kind of tweaked this recipe a little bit to suit our needs. And I felt like it added a little bit more to it with that sausage. And then I added the rest of the cheese on top. And I did add a little extra besides that one half a cup. And this is what it looks like when it came out of the oven. And this was such a good recipe. We all enjoyed this one. Uh, kind of a cross between a shepherd's pie and a lasagna in a way but really, really flavorful. And just all of these flavors went together, but it's up to you if you wanna add that sausage to it or not. I feel like it stretched the meal a lot further than it would have with just the pound of ground beef. But we did enjoy this one. And we really enjoyed all of them, and I hope that your family will too. I hope this gave you some ideas for some meal inspiration uh, that you can make for your family. These were, for us, you know, like I said, really good uh, ground beef recipes. So I hope that you will enjoy these as well. Hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. If you're interested in seeing more like it, please click that subscribe button and the notification bell. That will notify you when I post new videos. I hope everyone has a blessed day, a great week ahead. Thank y'all so much for watching. God bless y'all.